think this is um, lecture 28. Um, continuing on, uh, the making your own creative critical analysis of what you see, what you feel, what you noticed about COVID. It's not as if we stood outside of this and were passive observers. Most of us know some person who had COVID or even know someone who knew someone who died or someone who died of it. Um, so I've asked you to record these things in blogs, blogs, rather than academic papers. So what is a blog? This lecture is actually <coughs> on using that 2,500 year old invention by Aristotle. I mentioned this in an earlier lecture, but there was still question about what is it? Why are we doing it? Why aren't we writing boring old academic papers with footnotes? I, I tend to find this cheesy, breezy approach to writing, writing directly, writing from experience, the phenomenology of experience, uh, what you notice, and structuring these in non-contradictory, valid argumentation still still good after all this time, 2,500 years. What is a blog? So we're going to deal with um, the emergence of different factors in urbanism, digital narratives, and COVID as factors you might have noticed. Um, we also have the McLuhan Tetrad, um, sort of stolen by McLuhan out of Aristotle, from Aristotle, but many people done that, medieval philosophers, uh, language philosophers, Fichte in Germany 200 years ago. Um, what it doesn't mean, what it still, um, and why, why I contend that a Google search will never replace a Socratic interaction, and this is not just pure romanticism, is that we have relative ways of plugging data into this. But we have a very, after we amass data, what better data is than your lives, uh, as a researcher, a scientist, an artist, an agent, um, what's better than to structure it in a valid argumentation? We have sort of lost that art in the age of politics of identity, um, ad hominem argumentation. Um, at one point, we all have to be brains in a vat, just playing with these general concepts. Gamification all, all also diminishes this, treats it like a game, so forth. Okay, so this is the McLuhan S. Tetrad on the blog. What do blogs enhance? The media in the middle, communication, collaboration, collaboration via cloud computing. So it's a way of putting it back on the cloud. Open forum for ideas, construction of online communities. You have maybe hopefully an audience, whereas many academic papers depend upon conferences and publishers. And the reputation system plus the um, just the hourly, uh, the hourly minuscule hourly wage of developing academic papers makes it grind to halt. I am for reputation systems, specializations, I am for all of that, but when it becomes a suspended reality, um, such as in the pyramid scheme of the tenure system and so forth, it ends up being quite medieval. Um, every writer becomes an authority, bad, boo, but there is a language growth crossing boundaries. What does it obsolete? That's what it enhances. Um, it obsoletes, uh, removes traditional media as the only authority, need for official publication, read academia in that. Um, what else? What is the retrieve? Oral traditions of storytelling. What McLuhan was talking about and so was Plato. Um, coming out of the tradition with Socrates speaking and not writing. Um, modern contemporary language philosophers, Wittgenstein supposedly only wrote from his essays because I contend he liked 
the interlocutors, the idea of bouncing ideas off of especially opposing opinions. Uh, reverses, expansions uh, will grow with the expansion of the internet, move to video, a picture's worth 100,000 words, and a moving picture must be worth tens of millions of words. Anyway, so that's your blog. That's what you look forward to doing. Um, Beach Ball of Death. Um, McLuhan's Tetrad. Put any technology in the middle. What do we have? We have an enhancement. What is this new tool? A cell phone. A uh, 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 Twitter. Twitch. Um, Bitcoin. Uh, uh, TikTok. Anything. Put that smack in the middle and then you talk about the the attributes. So what we have is uh, lurching along with a concept of what all of these things might bring. What do they enhance? What does it obsolesce? Um, TikTok sort of obsolesces the need for longer term video even though we miss complete argumentations, complete playing with time, um, but they do reduce things down into their Twitter-like um, brevity. So we have this condensation. Nothing new. Uh, the haiku, the limerick, the short forms of poetry were kind of a reaction to longer lyrics, iambic pentameter drama, the works. Um, this We've had this throughout history. What is the short form of what we've seen? Retrieval. What early obsolescence tool brought back to play becomes an essential part of the new tool. Boom. What is tw uh, what does um, TikTok bring back? Hmm. Uh, maybe the slapstick comic, the need for one-liners like in Rodney, Rodney Dangerfield. Um, what does it retrieve? There's always something to retrieve, and surprisingly, something after thousands of years even. Um, reversal. When carried to the full potential, the new tool will reverse its original characteristics. Um, what? does TikTok reverse? What do what does Bitcoin reverse? Huh. Um, Bitcoin in a way expands fiat currency the way paper dollars was, but it is carried to such an extreme position. Its full potential means that we have all these computers on all the time to develop uh, in the moment reputation systems, um, a grounding in the reality of that machine, of that Bitcoin means it's out there at all times for anyone to pull, um, which means we have graphics cards chewing away at the cost of energy it takes to run these things. Um, fungible, um, kind of playing with the concept of fiat currency, apart from gold, apart from use value, apart from bartering. Cities, what do they make? Enhance, obsolesce, obsolesce, retrieve, reversal. Big question. A lot of it. Um, so let's go on further. Um, I've developed this lecture in kind of pairs. A lot of talk of the semiotic square. A lot of ideas about... Um, a lot of ideas about cities... Um, here it is, semiotic square. Um, for those who are into formal logic, all this is P, no this is P, some this is P, some this is not P. Universals, particulars, the two ends. Um, I rem remember encountering this in symbolic logic class, predicate calculus. When I was 19, I thought, found the, the um, navel of the earth that these... Um, from here, you could make any valid conversation about anything, law, physics, math. Um, it was, you know, struggling with high school math, wondering what it all meant. Uh, this was like the diamond bullet to hit you, and you, got, you understood, yes, it's about plugging values in and not contradicting yourself. In order to talk to other people, in order to make airplanes fly, order to make electricity flow, 
in order to make computers run. In Aristotle, we see the beginning of this. What I'm asking out of this class for you to do is take from your personal experience, having lived through the threat of COVID and quarantining, where are you living? Inside a city, uh, uh, outside the city or the suburbs or some other place, um, where did you have to live telematically? Where do you live in the internet? Where do you go? Every morning I do data mining on the internet for these chosen subjects. This, of course, was um, predicate calculus, the, the square of oppositions. And lo and behold, as I knew, McLuhan took this and famously plugged everything in, plugged good old Aristotle into the cell phone to understand what, what these actual terms were. So here it is. Um, this gets to work out. I used to be able to do this to a, a degree of aptitude. Now it would take me a while to get into these theorems to do it, but this is all lawyers do to a certain extent, um, mathematicians, anyone trying to establish valid argumentation, proposition, obverse, converse, compositive, you see on the, the left. Um, obverse. No S is non-P, but it gets more complicated when we say these are just langui lang language games compared to pure biology that moves inside of us, pure physics, which is our outer world. What do these languages have to do with that to start to manipulate things such as biology, gene editing, DNA, so forth? We do employ this these language games around certain concepts. It's uh, to a designer, artist, professor, guy, these things are extremely still important. Um, square of opposition, contrary, contradictory, subcontrary, subaltern. Your block, your life, your logic. Make sense of it and in some ways we grow up. We stop having emotional little arguments, although they never leave. Um, and we have a, an adult ability to talk to other people, um, logically, with free thinking, not just adopting pedagogy and propaganda for all of this. Um, furthermore, there it is, contraries, contradictories, subcontraries, subalterns. Um, these correspond to Venn diagrams, of course, like what's inclusive, what's, what's just touching as a Venn. Uh, uh, these are cases with supposedly binary subjects, uh, man, woman, shore, ocean, um, uh, land, ocean, cat, dog, black, white, um, all of these things you notice. What did you notice during COVID quarantine? What did you notice you were doing? This is not conducting an Oprah show. It's not to be bring up bad memories as if you're a victim your whole life. This is, this is control over your intellectual environment. This is, this is a degree of finesse so that you can begin to uh, maintain a, a pleasant aspect to your future, to your destiny at least one that seems to be in control. Here's some very interesting medieval drawings, uses of the semiotic square. It's incredibly interesting to me that this little engine has been around a long time and the same engine I'm asking you to talk about cities, selves, the internet, and cataclysms like um, COVID. Um, more squares, beautiful mathematics, strangely, not so strangely, this is embedded in AI. It is embedded in the beginnings of binary computer science, and we do always go back to this square of oppositions. The Venn diagrams, all SSP, no SSP, some SSP, some S are not P. Uh, all social media is productive, no social media is productive, some social media are productive, some social media are not productive. So you begin with your terms, all social media is productive, we go here, some social media is not productive. 
and then you analyze this to move up to this no SSP no social media is productive you say well we fall down rabbit holes we OCD we live our lives online instead of analog or real bodies we can start to parse out physical analog data science uh, as I said in the last lecture we cannot eat our PowerPoint reports we eat food we breathe air we love people um, but our approaches to each of these bits of analog reality can be better understood by approaching these language games. Here it is worked out with extended uh, Venn diagrams um, and so forth. Square of opposition, um, the faces on your pain level, you're supposed to give a language to your pain when you go to the doctor. And uh, just to start beginning to get a, a a, a language about that. The um, this was interesting in the data mining on social media. We're trying to understand the media of the future, um, humanity's responsibility, or uh, creating fair and equitable digital future. Then some people say, why equitable? Um, Eight billion, nine billion, billion people. Why don't you know the big bigger question? comes for any politician, certainly in the 30s when we had the Great Depression and the rise of fascism, the decolonization of France and England as a major f and industrial processes with leading to industrial war. What's humanity's responsibility? Uh, can we save the bottom third? Do we have some maintain we have to have a big die off to take care of the material limits to these 8 billion people. Public policy and regulation, internet of everything. In 50 years, internet use will be as pervasive and necessary as oxygen. Seamless connectivity will be the norm and it will be impossible to unplug. But what about our bodies? What about our bodies in love? What about our bodies in, in empathy? Who do we love? Um, we said the cities began as a very fresh and purposeful society of strangers, beautiful strangers, scary strangers, strangers who help, strangers who help you leave the provinciality and locked in attitudes of your small towns. Um, so we see this greater expanse with strangers and the internet, the beautiful stranger. Who do we look for? Where do we get our likes? So, so forth. We live longer. There's less work, but where's where is the money coming from? And for the one third of people who are living on a dollar a day in essentially a culvert, what about them? Uh, individualized experience. Digital life will be tailored to each, each user, but that leads directly to our pejorative snowflake modernity. Everyone's become a snowflake due to the modernist um, aspects of self. Power by the people, widening divides, yes. Um, haves and have nots, um, connection of being alone, uh, misallocation of trust, all these sort of things that are out there. Going on further, let's pull this down. I can't pull it down. Um, was it this one? Yes, it was. Um, that's a great cheat sheet for like the next 50 years of digital life from Pew Trust. Um, experts talk about this. Let's go back into our realm. Sorry, I did a little backward push. Um, let's get back to that modern square of opposite. We're almost there. Sorry about that. There. Faces in pain. Emojis of pain. Um, uh, future of urban living, talking about and prognosticating. We can use the semiotic square for backcasting. What are the separate positive and negative features of each media? Virilio, the plane, the invention of the plane also invented the plane crash. Um, the train, the train crash. Every invention has its attending disaster. The invention of the city brought forth the cataclysm and perhaps the vulnerability, condensed vulnerability to the plague, as we saw this. Um, 
semiotics uh, love this little invention I think in the West preserved by um, medieval is Islam spread all over the world whether you know it or not in terms of computer programming here it is simply in a in a an old medieval Latin script okay square opposition is very useful visual aid to understanding consequence of various relations of opposition and subalternation in the proposition using the same subject same predicate in order not to contradict yourself and in order to future cast back cast and in order not to devolve into ad hominem arguments and to study the way near the way that physical reality might work but certainly we saw the difference between Newtonian physics and post-Newtonian physics in terms of Einstein theories of relativity that happen when the numbers get big when we deal with larger quantities that led to the extremely yet terrifying practical application of the atomic bomb the the deal breaker um, so that uh, is part of it. Here are all these piles of Chinese bikes, uh, rows of Chinese bikes. It was all in this series of what is a semiotic square. We look for a medium. Enhance, reverse, retrieve, obsolesce. The medium. Social media enhances convivi conviviality, reverses tribalism, retrieves um, gossip, which is, according to some anthropologists, almost 60% of language is about gossip. This is validated. I can't footnote that right now, but was um, an American sociologist pointed, studied actually what the quantity of discussion was about. Um, obsolescence is journalism. We see it all, all over the place. Where do we learn our news? I'm not a big, I'm not a news junkie. I tend to see where this is blipping in social media and if it keeps blipping two or three times I go and look at it with an interest. Um, enterprise social networks into echo chambers they reverse okay this is turned around um, they extend knowledge social networks um, who's doing what I tend to try to follow educated people reverse into echo chambers as we saw during the 2016 um, election were supposedly please excuse these labeled words rednecks got into using social media so they could vote for Trump none of that was indicated in the the elite presses um, another pejorative NIMBY liberal presses said oh no Hillary Clinton's got this one locked in so what developed were echo chambers um, uh, much to the surprise of um, the New York Times reading crowd um, and that was caused by social media and immediately they came down on Twitter and Facebook for allowing this person to use it but freedom of speech I don't know. Retrieve human conversation, obsolete, obsolesce jobs and hierarchies. Once it's a strange combination. Once you obsolesce hierarchies, bureaucratic, developing use, psychology of use, psychology of desire, uh, 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 sort of combining and conflating use and exchange together, so you don't know which is which roof meals love basic things get expanded as they always had but once you get rid of those hierarchies you also get rid of jobs um, very interesting proposition um, going a little further before we move on before I get throttled at 25 minutes coming up um, our digitally mediated world here it is and then we'll take off after that to the next um, extends obsolete lessons retrieves reverse extends human property obsolescence previous mediums makes it kind of a quaint luxury good 
Retieve's a much older medium, the oral culture that McLuhan was talking about in, in his book um, on media. Its properties, when pushed to the limits, um, extend our voice, we individual. I could use social media and get over kind of ossified forms of hierarchy at my institution. Um, and have my voice heard by the people who were my audiences and customers, my students, research individuals, colleagues around the world. I did not have to depend upon little abstract rankings within my parochial institution, um, which I still find parochial. Um, but with the social media, we have this perhaps greater mobility. As we say, we get rid of hierarchies the creation of jobs becomes more in question. Um, uh, crowdfunding could be merely crowd fleecing, different pump and dump schemes, so forth. Obsolesce, human and human conversation. I miss that. Uh, does human conversation um, demand respect in reputation systems? It should. Um, we don't want um, the Kardashian world to take us over completely. Influencers are held up at a bizarre sort of reverence. Uh, offline is the new luxury. There you go. Reverse into populism and demagoguery. Surprise, 2016. Global orthodoxy that ruthlessly narrows public thought. And retrieve tribal affi affiliation. Surprise. Um, 2016 elections, which they wanted to blame on meddling by outside sources, the Russians. When is this country not meddled in other people's affairs? This was very hypocritical. But the tribalization will make our society vulnerable to information warfare, which it has. I contend a lot of the PC wars, the culture wars, are information warfare. Um, biology rears its ugly, its beautiful ugly head like COVID again, and perhaps we'd be lucky to find some sort of equilibrium. Um, this is the beginning of a valid argumentation to complete your blogs with, our fantastic book with, um, and onward and upward.